welcome to our cottage garden in Somerset. It's uh, the second week of April now and I just wanted to take a minute to show you around, mostly because the tulips are all flowering. So this is a little bit earlier than we expected um, for a couple of reasons. Firstly because I left the bulbs in, um, I didn't add these ones last autumn, so these have been in since 2020, um, some of them are in 2021 but mostly since 2020. We've also had crazy weather so it's been really really warm which has accelerated the growth of everything but we've also had frosts at night and storms, lots of rain so unfortunately things are getting battered really quickly so I wanted to come outside and show you around while everything's still out. I think um, the tulips are actually starting to go over already so I'm sort of thinking now what's going to be interesting in the garden in the next few weeks so um, definitely trying to appreciate it while we still can out here. So in this area of the garden this is where I grow most of my tulips and I grow them because I like them they're not particularly beneficial to pollinators but um, they're a flower that I just really really love. I think having bright colour this time of year just makes you feel really good um, so I try to grow as many tulips as I can. These ones on the side here are called Design Impression and I planted these in 2021 and people say when you leave tulips in the ground they tend to come back with less vigour, they might get smaller, they might disappear a little bit each year but I think these are absolutely amazing, if anything they look better than the first year that I grew them so I'm definitely going to be adding more of these to the garden in autumn this year. I also have this mystery red tulip which unfortunately I don't like but I planted about 300 of these around the garden. Um, I did actually order a different bulb so they were also supposed to be design impression. I got them from the wholesalers. In contrast I got these bulbs from a small um, farm in the Netherlands but he looks after one field and I think he labels everything correctly and it's done with much more consideration. So unfortunately these red ones have um, appeared. This is their second year of flowering in the garden. I hate them but I just feel like it would be a shame to get rid of them so more than anything I'm trying to come to terms with them and just trying to enjoy them. Um, my favourite thing about the time when the tulips are flowering is that they're surrounded by these little forget-me-nots and muscari so I added this muscari called baby's breath which is a really pale blue colour and I like things with soft colours so if I'd had the pink tulips that I wanted we would have a really really nice array of pastel colours in this part of the garden. Unfortunately it's quite strong so if you like harsh colours then you might like how the garden looks at the moment but I think I will probably pull these tulips out and replace them with softer colours this autumn but having said that I might just feel like it's too wasteful and leave them in for another year, I'm not sure. So um, let's go and have another look around the rest of the garden. Another thing I'm working on in the garden is naturalising things in the grass and mowing the lawn less. So in this area here I have um, a narcissi that I've planted called Pablo and I've also got um, lots of primulas dotted around and I'm letting the daisies grow. There's also some cow parsley that you can see starting to push up through the soil. And there's a couple of reasons that I'm doing this. Um, one is because it's better for the pollinators. Um, the narcissi don't provide much benefit to the pollinators, but they do love the primroses and the daisies and they will love the cow parsley. Um, and the second reason obviously is because I think it looks nicer and like I mentioned earlier I love these soft colours, I love soft yellows, soft whites and having this area naturalised with soft colours um, I just love looking out the window and seeing flowers and I think that's so much nicer than just seeing short manicured grass I'd much rather see a kind of meadow with a kind of wild and sprawling feel to it so this will um, be a work in progress over the next few years but this is the first year that I've really tried to start making this part of the garden more interesting and more wildlife friendly. So my plans are also to add some um, fritillary bulbs when the autumn comes around because I think some like purple and white fritillaries scattered among, among here will look really dainty and pretty and I love the way the petals swoosh in the wind, they're a lot more delicate than these narcissi are. Um, so I think by adding some small kind of jewel-like flowers this area will look, uh, it will blend in more easily um, with the grass and the daisies and will look more natural. Um, I also might add some wooden enemies, um, we'll see, but um, overall the kind of main takeaway here is just that this is a work in progress and hopefully soon it will be much more beautiful than just short grass.
We're in our veg garden now and things are really starting to take off here with the warmer weather. Things are emerging through the ground. We've had our first harvest of asparagus ever, which was amazing. So we planted that um, in the first few weeks of lockdown, so 2020. Um, you have to let it establish for a couple of years and now that we're in early 2022, we are harvesting a little bit. We're not gonna overdo it because we still want to let it get established, but um, the asparagus spears that we did have were amazing. We had them in the risotto and we can't wait to have more. We grow two types of asparagus. We've got an early variety and a late variety. So we're probably gonna leave the early bed now that we've had one harvest from it. And then when the later asparagus starts to appear, we'll harvest some of that as well. Um, but it's a really lovely thing to grow and it makes these beautiful fern-like structures after you let it grow out and rest for the year. Um, so we're really happy that we're growing that here. Um, other things that we've got going on, we're kind of restructuring this area a little bit so it's somewhat messy. We're going to be raising the raised beds by another level when we get some more sleepers and we're also going to be getting rid of this grass because if you haven't noticed the ground is so uneven it's impossible to mow it always looks really messy so what we're doing is um, on the opposite side we've got some tarp laid down we will be doing the same here um, we'll let that suppress the grass then we'll put some newspaper down and then cover that with wood chippings probably after we've leveled the slope a little bit but the aim is just to make this more of a lower maintenance kind of garden because it gets messy very quickly and we have to put a lot of effort in to try and tidy up the grass around the raised beds um, but that's all cosmetic, everything to do with how we grow vegetables is going really, really well. Um, this um, perennial kale that's next to me is doing amazingly. We've taken cuttings and expanded the amount of perennial kale that we're growing. So um, we've gone from two plants to four now and we'll probably keep making more of them just so we've got a good stock to get us through the hungry gap in spring. Um, we've also got loads of perennial onions, we've got chives, we've got perennial leeks and um, the perennial leeks are doing amazingly and in comparison the non-perennial leeks that I've grown have failed miserably. So um, they're just behind me here, but they basically didn't put on any size over winter and now they've gone to seed. So I think I'll just leave those in. Um, I kind of want to see what the flowers look like and I'm sure the bees will enjoy them too. So at least something came off them. Maybe I'll collect the seeds for sowing another time. But to be honest, in this part of garden, I do want to rely less on using seeds and growing more perennial plants that I can share with people and divide and really depend on without having to buy so many seeds every year. Um, so we've also got our garlic and rhubarb in this garden doing really really well. We haven't harvested any of the rhubarb yet because that was another thing that we planted at the start of lockdown and wanted to let it get established but it's looking quite good and I think we can probably take a few pieces from that now. Um, the elephant garlic is looking incredible. I cannot wait to harvest it. It's ginormous. So the top of the elephant garlic actually looks ha how a leek would look um, whereas our regular garlic looks more like a spring onion in size. So a really big difference. Um, other things we have here are um, our kiwi vine that we've started and that's something that's really been struggling with all of these late frosts that we've been having because the warm weather is making it put on these new shoots of growth and then the frost just kills it off and it dies back to the bark. Um, so we're really hoping that we don't have many more frosts and that our blossom and our kiwi plant can really start to um, grow a bit more and get established because they're just young plants. We want to give them a really good start so that we can get good harvests of them as the years go on. And I think that's more or less everything. Um, things in this part of the garden are quite uneven because I started things at different months in the autumn and winter. So um, I grow narcissi in four different beds. You can see there's one behind me. Um, the bed behind me I started in 2020, um, but the other three I started in 2021, so they're not flowering yet. But what it will mean is next year they should all flower in one go and be a really high impact kind of border to this part of the garden. So right now it doesn't look like much. We've got a good food supply, but we have the foundations in place for this to be a really, really nice area probably next year I'd say give it a year or two and this should look officially a lot better than it does now and before the sun sets I just want to quickly show you our orchard so again this is an area that has been struggling with the late frosts we tend to get this really really lovely blossom and then um, quite often the frost can kill it and then we have lower harvests of fruit um, so we're really hoping that we don't have many more frosts um, but this is a pear tree here and the blossom on it looks amazing at the moment usually um, we find that our 
our um, apple trees and our cherry tree will be flowering at the same time as the narcissi underneath but this year everything's a little bit mismatched so it doesn't look great here um, but we have had a nice display of narcissi in the orchard and these are mostly ice follies i'll be adding more of them next year um, but it's a big space so it's going to take a bit of time and saving up to have a really high impact kind of appearance here um, but i like the subtle displays of flowers that we've had this spring anyway um, we're really looking forward to the cherry trees flowering so we've got two cherry trees here um, one of them is absolutely huge and it has a really really nice display of white petals um, and then everything else here is an apple tree we'll probably try and add some more interesting kind of fruit trees as we move forward and potentially turn this into more of like a food forest kind of growing system rather than just simply an orchard with flowers underneath but again that's a long-term plan um, this is just how it looks now um, but we've got so much to work on and so much to look forward to so thank you for um, coming to see our garden i hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more subscribe and we will have plenty more garden tours coming in the future. Thanks for watching and goodbye.